26. Finding the volume of oxygen needed to combust with propanol. So we have to start off with a balance equation. Oxygen, carbon dioxide and water. 3 carbons, 8 hydrogens, 4 here. That gives us 10 oxygen on the right side. There's already 1 oxygen here, so we will need 9 oxygen here, 9 and a half. 9 over 2 multiplied by O2. So 0 0.1 more of propanol. That will require us to have 0 0.1 multiplied by 9 over 2. We will have 0 0.45 moles of oxygen required. Room temperature pressure, one more of gas will occupy 24 cubic decimeter cubic centimeter or rather 24 decimeter so volume of O2 number of moles multiplied by 24 dm cube and that will give us 10.8 cubic decimeter So form the equation, find out the moles of oxygen, multiply by 24. Which compound reacts with hydrogen cyanide to form a, a product that has no chiral carbon? For this question, it might be better to actually draw out the structure. Display the structure to the right. So we have A, B, C, propanol, and propanone. Now, hydrogen cyanide, how it reacts is HCN. Add the double bond here, the O, the H will be attached to form a single bond and then the CN portion will be attached here All right so you can check whether there's a chiral carbon or not focusing on here there's no chiral carbon here there's no chiral carbon here because they have two hydrogen same groups three hydrogen same group this carbon has one, two, three, four different groups. So there is a chiral carbon here. We have to look for one that's no chiral carbon. So we carry on. Okay. H, C H, and then we focus on this carbon. It is still chiral. There are four different groups attached to this carbon. So it is chiral. Propanol, H and CN, and one group, two, three, four different groups. This one is chiral, so we expect D to be non chiral, but we check. We have a H and then a CH, a, a CN. We have two of the same groups attached to this carbon, so this carbon. Ex ex it's actually not chiral. So D is the one that doesn't give us a chiral carbon atom. Which of the compounds give us a carboxylic acid when heating with dichromate? So you have to recognize the structures or you recognize at least the functional groups. This is an aldehyde. It will become an acid, an oxidized. This is a ketone. So it will not be oxidized to an acid. This is a primary alcohol. So it will be 
an acid if we were to hit it under reflux. This is an alcohol, but this is a secondary alcohol. So when oxidized, it actually becomes a ketone. So we have two substances that will be an acid under reflux. Compound Y does not fizz when added to solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate. In other words, it's not an acid. It doesn't have a COOH group. So we can eliminate option A. It can be hydrolyzed by dilute, dilute sulfuric acid to produce two products. So we can suspect that it actually is an ester. And so we eliminate C. Okay, which is an which is not an ester. So we have between B and D. And when we hydrolyze it, we actually get two organic products. So let's try B ethyl ethanoid. Okay, this is ethyl ethanoid, two carbon acid. 2 carbon alcohol and when we hydrolyze it we will actually get CH3 COOH on this side and then we have the alcohol on the other side Okay, and if you check the MR the molecular mass MR for this ethanoic acid will be 60 and then this one will be 46 so B will be the ester that we want another way of doing it is actually you can draw the structure of ethyl ethanoate and see whether it gives us an MR of 88. Okay, because if you were to try for butyl methanoate, I suspect that it would not have an MR of 88. Thirty. How does carbon bond in a polymer polyethene compare to ethene? All right. Polyethene. The repeating unit. single bond it in alkene will have the double bond now the double bond will be stronger and double bond will also be shorter so the carbon carbon bond is longer in polyethylene and also weaker in polyethylene. 